Hey gang, and welcome back. This is actually not a reminder, but rather an announcement. Flipside Gaming is now selling some exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats, which you'll see in this video. There's Dak and Blackblade, Solkanar the Swamp King, Pillage, and Nebuchadnezzar. They're free shipping within the US, and you can use the promo code to help get 10% off. Additionally, Flipside Gaming is going to be giving away a box of Battle Bond to celebrate my 20,000 subscribers. For entry, all you have to do is use the promo code MTGMUDSTA on any order over $10 and you'll be entered to win. You can do multiple entries for each time you use the promo code. The time frame for this giveaway is between June 1st and June 30th with the drawing happening in July. You might notice the colors are more vibrant in this week's game as I exported it using a different kind of filter, so let me know what you think about it. This week I am playing Doretti and I keep him with Commander Sphere, Valakut, Chaos Warp, Mindstone, Phyrexia's Core, Thran Dynamo, and Scarecrone. My buddy Jeff is playing his Surak deck and keeps Breeding Pool, Steam Fence, Evolving Wilds, Temple of Mystery, Future Sight, Harmonize, and Phyrexian Metamorph. Brian is playing Gave and keeps a hand with Plains, Exotic Orchard, Overgrown Tomb, Path to Exile, Grave Pact, Overrun, and Slimefoot. Lastly, Jameson is playing his Send Triplets deck and keeps a hand with Mind's Dilation, Aethersworn Agitator, Coalition Relic, Demir Signet, Godless Shrine, Swamp, and Skyclad Expanse. I win the die roll and start us off. For the first turn of the game, I play a tap Valakut and pass. Jeff plays a tap Breeding Pool and also passes. Brian plays a tapped Overgrown Tomb, passing to Jameson. Jameson continues the trend of tap Shocks and drops a Godless Shrine. I play a Phyrexia's Core and cast Mindstone. Jeff plays a tap Steam Vents and passes to Brian. Brian plays Exotic Orchard and passes. Jameson plays a Skyclad Expanse and casts a Demir Signet. I play a Mountain and cast Thran Dynamo, tapping the Dynamo to then cast Commander Sphere. Jeff plays a Temple of Mystery, scrying the top card and keeps it there. Brian plays a Plains and casts Slimefoot before passing to Jameson. Jameson has no land for turn, but pays 3 to cast a Foundry Inspector. I don't have a land for turn, but I do cast Solemn to find one. I then cast a ready, and Jeff helps me out while I discard Scarecrone to draw one. Jeff plays an Evolving Wilds and casts Soul Ring. He then casts Phyrexian Metamorph and has it come into the copy of the Thran Dynamo. He then sacks the Evolving Wilds to find a mountain and passes. Brian plays a Forest and casts Growing Rites of Itlamok. He keeps a Fungal Behemoth and passes turn. Jameson plays a Swamp and casts Coalition Relic. Moving to combat, he gets First Blood by swinging his Foundry Inspector at Jeff for 3. I play a Mountain for my turn and pay 6 to cast a Steel Hellkite. With my Dragon on the stack, Jameson activates his Relic's ability to put a counter on it. I then move to combat and swing Solemn at Jameson for 2. In my second main phase, I uptick Toretti and pass. Jeff starts his turn by asking how much everyone likes Toretti. My answer of a lot is like a whisper in the unanimous roar of not so much from the rest of the table. Jeff then pays to cast Terracidon and targets Toretti, Growing Rites, and the Coalition Relic. With the target on the stack though, I try and get cute by casting Chaos Warp on Doretti to hit some value. I do flip Topor Orb, which isn't bad. Brian plays a Plains for his land for turn and casts Gave before passing to Jameson. Jameson plays a Tap Sunken Hollow and casts an Isochron Scepter, imprinting Swords to Plowshares and making it an enemy of pretty much everyone at the table. At the end of Jameson's turn, I sacrifice the Commander Sphere to draw a card. I play a Mountain for my turn and inch ever closer to Valakut being active. I then recast Toretti, upticking him to discard a card and draw a card. I mistakenly uptick him to 7, but the guys catch it later on. Jameson strongly suggests I don't attack him if I want to keep the Hellkite, so I swing it at Brian for 5. I then pay 0 to activate Hellkite's second ability and destroy Brian's elephant token. Jeff plays an island and casts Future Sight, revealing Cross and Grip off the top. Jeff is worried about the Scepter and the Topor Orb at this point, and rather than waiting for others to help, he uses the Grip to destroy my orb. At the end of Jeff's turn, Jameson activates the Scepter to cast Swords on Brian's Gave, and Brian gains 5 life. Brian plays a Vazuva and has it come into play as a copy of his Exotic Orchard. He then casts a Corpse Jack Menace and passes. Jameson casts Sharoom the Hegemon in his main phase and returns his Coalition Relic to the battlefield. He then puts a counter on his Relic as an act of good faith and passes to me. I uptick Doretti and discard a card and play a Mountain. I then declare that I'm moving to combat and Brian casts Path to Exile on Sharoom to give me a path to deal with the Scepter. At this point, Jeff realizes what a cheater I am and that I should really be at 7 counters with Doretti and I try and make it up to everyone by smashing my Steel Hellkite into Jameson. I pay 2 as my Dragon deals 5 to Jameson and destroy both the Scepter and the Signet. I then pass to Jeff. Jeff draws for turn, revealing a Gruul Signet. 
He then plays a Cinder Glade, which comes into play untapped, and asks again how much we all liked Doretti. My response summarizes my mood pretty well. Stop asking that question! He then pays 5 to cast Acidic Slime, and destroys my Solemn, which lets me draw a card. Jeff then moves to combat and takes out Doretti. In his second main phase, he casts the Signet and reveals a Command Tower. Jeff then casts Harmonize, drawing the Tower and revealing Genesis, Aestheticism, and flips a Courser of Crufix on the top. Brian plays a Temple of the False God and casts Grave Pact. He then passes. Jameson draws for turn and taps out to cast Mind's Dilation, and suddenly casting spells seems bad? At the end of his turn, I sacrifice Mindstone to try and draw into an answer. I play a Mountain for my turn and have Valakut Trigger kill Jameson's Foundry Inspector. Jameson offers me a similar deal to leave him alone and be the last one he'll target, so I swing the Steel Hellkite at Brian once more. Upon connecting, I pay 4 to destroy both Grave Pact and the Corpse Jack Menace, which in turn forces us all to sacrifice a creature, we think. I then pass to Jeff. Jeff draws for turn and reveals Scavenging Grounds, and plays it in his main phase. He reveals a Biden of Thassa off the top, and Jeff then casts Progenitor Mimic. This triggers the Mind's Dilation, and Jameson takes Jeff's Biden. Jeff then has the Mimic come in as a copy of Trastodon, and blows up Mind's Dilation, the Biden, and my Thran Dynamo. Jeff then casts Asceticism and moves to combat, swinging the Tarasidon at me for 9. At the end of Jeff's turn, Brian makes a sapling with Slimefoot. Brian recasts Gave in his main phase and passes. Jameson taps 4 and makes sure he's the right colors for it so he can cast Supreme Verdict. With the spell in the stack, Brian removes a counter from Gave to make a sapling token and lets the spell resolve. With two sapling's dying, Slimefoot deals 2 to all of Brian's opponents and Brian gains 2. I play Sequestered Stash for my turn, and pay 8 to recast a ready. I uptick him, pitching Mana Vault and Karn, Silver Golem, to draw 2. Jeff draws a Forest and reveals an Izzet Signet, which he then casts. Jeff then casts Avenger of Endicar, and gets 7 plant tokens. He plays a Treetop Village off the top, and all of his plants gain a plus 1 plus 1 counter. Jeff then reveals Hammer of Perforos off the top, which he casts, and reveals Reclamation Sage. Moving to combat, he swings the Avenger at Doretti, and then two plants at me, two at Jameson, and three at Brian. Brian plays a Forest and recasts Gave. He then passes turn. Jameson casts a Beacon of Unrest in his first main phase, and brings back Jeff's Progenitor Mimic. He has it come in as a copy of Avenger of Zendikar, and gains five plant tokens. He passes to me. I play a Mountain for my turn, and deal three to Jameson. I then re-re-recast Doretti, and uptick him discarding two more cards, and drawing two. I then pass. Jeff draws for turn and reveals a zealous conscript. He plays a command tower and his plants gain another token. He then casts Genesis and brings out Serac himself. Moving to combat, Jeff turns everything sideways and points it in my direction. As a result, I drop to 8 and Jeff passes. Brian untaps, drawing for turn and passes. Jameson makes an Avenger Zendikar copy on his upkeep, gaining 5 more plants. He then plays an island in his main phase, giving all of his plant tokens 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters. He then casts a Vidalcan Archmage, and moves to combat. Jameson adjusts his tokens to show which came in and which have been there, and swings the 5 tokens from last turn at Jeff for 10. I draw for turn, and uptick to ready, discarding 2 of my Tron lands because mana isn't going to help me now. I then cast Nevernial Disc, followed by Wheel of Fortune. Jeff realizes he should have revealed what he drew, and flops it onto the table. Jeff plays a mountain off the top, and his plants gain another plus one plus one counter. He then casts his own steel Hellkite, and reveals a Xenagos off the top. With the Hellkite still in the stack though, Brian casts Aura Mutation to destroy Jeff's future site, and gains five Sapperling tokens. Moving to combat, Jeff swings everything at Jameson. Jameson blocks the Avenger with one of his, three of his plants block three of Jeff's, and one plant blocks Genesis, while another blocks Surak. With the blockers declared, Jeff regenerates his Avenger, and deals twelve. With the Steel Hellkite's on damage trigger, Jeff pays enough to destroy the Avenger slash Progenitor Mimic. Brian untaps for turn and plays a Sun Petal Grove. He then casts a Yavimaya Sapperd, gaining another Sapperling token. He then realizes he's one mana short for casting a Crater Hoof Behemoth and potentially winning the game, so he instead casts a Doubling Season. With nothing else, he passes to Jameson. At the end of Brian's turn, Shimmer Mirror gets flashed in by Jameson. Jameson plays a Cascading Cataract as his land for turn, and removes his counter to gain a blue mana. He then passes turn. I play a Buried Ruin and cast Gamble. I found my card, and I discard Scrap Mastery at random. I then cast a Darksteel Forge, and uptick to ready pitching 2. Rather than risking Jeff have a Stifle effect on his turn, I activate my disc during my main phase. 
Jeff pays 2 and regenerates the Steel Hellkite, and I realize I'm all but dead on his next swing. Jeff plays a Hinterland Harbor and casts Xenagos. Moving to combat, he puts the Xenagos trigger on the Steel Hellkite and smashes into me for 10. I reveal the Mycosynth Lattice in my hand, which I didn't have the mana to cast, and promptly die. Brian plays a Wooded Bastion and recasts Gave. Jameson plays a Command Tower and drops a Master Transmuter. He then brings out Hannah, Ship's Navigator, and passes. Jeff untaps and pumps the Steel Hellkite 5 times, making it a 10-5. He then moves to combat and puts the Xenagos trigger on the Hellkite, making it a 20-15. He smashes this into Jameson and takes him out. In Jeff's second main phase, he casts a Coiling Oracle and reveals Urabrask, putting it into his hand. Brian untaps and plays an Isolated Chapel. He pays 4 to cast a Thalid Soothsayer and passes. Jeff untaps, he then once again pumps the Hellkite 5 times, and with the final pump on the stack, Brian makes 4 sapling tokens with Gave. Brian then casts Harsh Sustenance, which gets countered by Jeff's Dissipate. Jeff then swings the Hellkite at Brian for 20, and after connecting, pays 0 to kill all of the tokens. Brian pays to sacrifice one of them, and puts the counter on Gave, and Jeff passes. Brian untaps for his turn, draws, and plays Twilight Mire. With nothing able to deal with the Hellkite though, he concedes. Game review time. So, the question I want to pose to you guys at the end of this video, is it ever worth it to continually recast your commander over and over again when you know that your opponents have ways to deal with them on board? In my case, casting Doretti over and over again only to use the plus 2 once before he dies typically in Jeff's combat step was never really worth it. Similarly, Brian kept running out Gave no matter what, and he would continue to expand his board state despite the fact that Neverenthal's disc is sitting on the field waiting to be popped. I think he and I focused too much on what we were trying to do, and didn't really respond to our opponents, and only focused on our own stuff. Jeff, on the other hand, never did anything particularly adventurous, but he was consistently strong throughout the game. Future Sight allowing him to play lands or cards off the top allowed him to get through some dead draws and into some action real fast. Despite not being able to cast Send Triplets in this game, Jameson did change up a bunch of cards in the deck, and made it a little bit more consistent. If you hadn't noticed, he ran a Sphinx sub-theme, which is kinda cool, and there's a lot of good Sphinxes in the Esper color pairings. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.